Hello beautiful, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this blast from the past. I am going to be refilming, redoing my unpopular opinions makeup tag. I think that's what it's called. I filmed this back in 2018 and I rewatched it yesterday and I cringed. I cringed. The way that I feel like I have grown myself. <laughs> I feel like I'm a little better at like expressing myself online, expressing myself with human beings since then. I mean, it's four years ago. Like I said, I did post this in October 2018, but it's time to redo the video. I want to film it again. I've seen some of my friends redo this and actually I saw Patty Alonso do this video and she tagged me as her inspiration, which is hilarious because like I said this was filmed in 2018 but I will link a couple of videos down below and I will also link the creators of this but if you're interested in hearing these answers stay tuned and if you haven't been here before do consider subscribing because I am uploading right now every day until Christmas and I mean I am a big fan of makeup I love makeup I love beauty but I feel like my opinions about makeup and my unpopular opinions about makeup has definitely changed throughout the years I went from I went from being pretty I mean I am a pretty I say what I say <laughs> I can come up a little harsh online and I think that I've been able to be better lately at actually expressing myself in a way so that it doesn't sound so harsh because there's no need for me to be harsh like I can have my opinion you can have your opinion which I've always thought but I'm better at expressing that nowadays but yeah I wanted to refilm this tag because I feel like I have a different take on it today than I did back then not that I'm like not that I don't agree with the things that I said then but I definitely think that there are nicer ways to say things and I think that I'm a little bit more balanced online now than I used to be although I do think that some of the things that you say it sticks with you forever and you can't shake it even though you change some people like they won't give you grace to to be able to change like if you said something that's going to be their opinion on you for forever like for example I still see people uh, saying in comments of other people's YouTube channels that they hate me and they hate my channel because I always say that neutrals are boring and I always ask who asked for this with neutrals even though I haven't done that in what two years I, I I think like at least a year and a half so I think that even though sometimes you change some people are not interested in change but I wanted to refilm this video uh, for me because I think it is an interesting tag. It is an older tag. Like I said, I will leave some links down below. Do check it out. And of course, everyone is allowed to have their own opinions, but also remember that everyone is allowed to grow and learn. But I'm not like talking down on my like past self. I'm just saying that everyone is on a journey and we can all strive to do better. And I feel like I'm doing better. I mean, sometimes we have to acknowledge and be kind to ourselves. And I can say that I feel like I'm doing better. And also be kind to yourself as well. Okay, enough talking about this, let's zoom in. Just so that we are 100% clear, you are definitely allowed to disagree with me. I love seeing your opinions in the comments. What I don't love is seeing people getting super upset either with me or with other YouTubers or with people in the comments when they disagree with something. Just leave your opinion and move on. You don't have to be so upset or so rude about it. Like there, there's no need for that. I feel like sometimes people are just, they're expecting that the YouTuber is gonna be like dismissive or rude about it. So they're going in rude, just like as a precaution or something. And it just makes you seem a little aggressive. Like there's no need for that. You are definitely allowed to disagree with me. The amount of times that people disagree with me in my comments, like, it's totally okay. But sometimes it just turns into a little much. I had someone the other day actually calling me dumb in the comments because I hadn't perfected the English language after living in the US for a year. We're all doing the best we can. <laughs> I, think, I think we're all just doing the best we can. So there are eight different questions. And the first question is popular makeup product that you don't like. And I did pull out two products from my worst of 2022 that I have seen other people mention as favorites like actual like favorites and I just don't like any of them the first one is the rare beauty positive light tinted moisturizer I have this in two shades I bought one myself and I got one as PR I don't like this at all because on me it turns extremely glowy to the point where I feel like it's greasy and I feel like 
even after wearing it just for like half an hour, I'm like, oh, I, I kind of need to wash my face. Like, I feel like it looks greasy. I have heard several people really enjoying this one, but they seem all to have either loving a dewy, super glowy skin, which I don't like on me, or they have very dry skin. So I don't, I do understand why some people like it. I just, I don't. I have a normal skin type and during the summer it turns a little combo. I get a little oily around my nose. That is just too much for me, even during winter. It's not for me. The second product is the Urban Decay Vice, you know, that lipstick that's like a liquid lipstick that has a glowy finish that doesn't transfer. I didn't like that one at all. I thought it looked extremely heavy on the lips and it felt heavy. I didn't like that one at all and also like just felt a little sticky and I just, I didn't enjoy how it felt. I didn't enjoy how it wore. I just didn't like how it, how it felt. I'd rather have a lipstick that feels good on the lips that I have to reapply a couple of times than something where I am extremely aware of it all times on my lips and it just feels uncomfortable and sticky and I, I wasn't a fan. Also, can we just like as a, an extra bonus thing put in here that a lot of people are head over heels loving the Patrick Ta brand. And I will say the only thing that I really, really love from the brand is the brow gel. I'm going to be using that one today. The, what is it called? This one. I'm gonna link it down below. I'll link everything that I wear down below, even though I won't talk about the products that much. It's the Major Brow Lamination Gel. Absolutely love it. But like the blushes, the bronzer, like I didn't love it. The foundation, we will talk about that. We'll talk about that in a bit. And I just, I'm, I don't see, it's not that I don't see the appeal. I think the things have been decent, but it hasn't been blowing me away. Like I've literally decluttered them. But it's more like, I don't see how everyone can be so crazy about the brand. I'm like, I don't hate it, but I'm just a little bit surprised at like how crazy people are about this brand. And I'm just over here being like, I mean, it's nice. Some of it, not so much, but I'm, I, I don't subscribe to the hype around the brand. Let's just, whoop, let's just put it like that. The next question is popular makeup brand product that everyone else seems to hate, but you love. And the f there are a bunch of things here that I could mention. And I know that in my video from 2018, the answer that I gave in that one is still true. And that is glittery highlighters. I still think that there is a time and a place for glittery highlighter. And I think that it can really give you a nice wet effect. So I still think that that is true. I still agree with that answer. But I will say, REM Beauty. I am, I like things from REM Beauty. I use their lip oil every day. It's literally the lip oil that's by my computer right now. It is the one that I like keep reapplying when I'm sitting down to edit. This one is wonky. Wonky. Ooh wonkier than usual and also like their highlighter was in my best of beauty their slim lipsticks i love so much that i bought it in another color overall i think all their products are decently good i didn't love the eyeshadow palettes but it's definitely doable i have one of their liquid eyeshadows it's pretty good i haven't tried all of them of course I didn't love the concealer but i think that the concealer is probably maybe not for someone that's like you know <laughs> about to be 39 and has a lot of fine lines under her eyes. I thought it was a little hard to work with. I'm going to give that one another go though, um, because I feel like, oh, no, no, abort, abort, abort. Because I feel like there's definitely ways that I can make that one work. I just feel like I, I need to, I need to play with that, that one a little bit more. Is that okay? My brows are a little wonky today. I mean, they're always a little wonky. I like my brows, but some people hate my brows and they will let me know. <laughs> and listen, it is okay if you hate my brows. I promise you that I will not show up in the middle of the night and tattoo my brows on you. You are safe. The next question really shows when this tag was created because this tag was created in 2018 and I did the tag quite directly after the creator of the tag tagged me in it. And it is makeup collab you didn't like or were not interested in. Back then, <laughs> back in 2018, makeup collabs just weren't all over the place. Not everyone was getting a makeup collab. We have to remember that back in 2018, the most makeup collabs we saw were from bigger YouTubers. Uh, 
people like me, and even now I am considered a mid-sized YouTuber, some would even consider me a small YouTuber, I am like 120,000 something at this point, I am growing at the speed of a snail, which is totally fine, but back in 2018, people like me did not get collabs. But I feel like nowadays, collabs are a lot more common. A lot of people can get a collab, a lot of people get to work with brands, and maybe there's been a little bit of an inflation in it, but I also like that brands are recognizing that... Ooh, what kind of a line is this? That is a peculiar line that we are gonna fix with some blush in a bit, I'm sure. But a lot of brands are realizing that influencers or like creators it can help you sell a product and also that that the creative vision of someone isn't tied directly to the amount of subscribers they have because i will say some of the best collabs that i see or more most innovative creative collabs i see are not necessarily by the big the big boys and um, and i i like that i actually had a meeting a while back with a, a, an owner of a makeup brand a big makeup brand like we're not even talking we're not talking like indie brand, we're talking big makeup brand. I was very fortunate to be able to talk to that person and he told me that he thought that the way that collabs were right now, the end of glam collabs was over. And I asked him what he meant with glam collabs. And he said the kind of collabs where an influencer just does the kind of makeup that they like uh, that is not really different from the makeup that's already offered on the market or maybe even from the brand and they just put some kind of glamorous twist to it and name shadows from like you know their, their dogs and stuff and I do think that maybe that is over and honestly there are collabs that I love like for example I'm looking at right now I see it in front of me the Heather Austin and Adept Cosmetics collab that one I mean she named one of the shadows from her like her dog, but the palette itself, let me show you. The palette itself has a color story that it's not offered within the Depth Cosmetics from before and also not readily available in the makeup community. So you have to bring something new. Are you bringing something new with the theming? Are you bringing something new with the packaging? Are you bringing something new with the formulas or the color combos? Or like, what are you bringing to the table? And I think that he might had, have had a point with the the collabs that we are right now at the end of where collabs just for the sake of collabs just putting a popular youtubers or a popular instagram is name on a fairly generic palette with a fairly generic theming and with names that are 100 percent insider jokes that era might be over this was a very roundabout way of not answering the question let me get an orange blush because i am in the market for an orange blush today and i can actually answer the question <laughs> I'm gonna be using this orange glowy blush by Little Cosmetics. This was in my yearly favorites. I absolutely adore this one. I don't know the name of it because like, it's one of those singles that you pop into um, one of these uh, yourself, but I will put it down below in case you're interested. If you were, look at that. If you were in the market for a glowy orange blush, definitely would recommend this one. It is very glowy and very orange and I like it a lot. I used this one yesterday and it's very glowy. I think I'm gonna use this one today. It is like a, what do I wanna use? It's like a green to a blue. Do I wanna have that? Yes, let's do that. So what I really, ooh, that is green. So what I really wanted to say with the answer of this question is that there are too many collabs right now to really pinpoint the ones like, there are so many I'm not interested in. Like, you, it's impossible right now to buy all collabs. Back in the days, in 2018, if you deliberately didn't pick up one of the five big collabs of the year, that was something worth talking about. But that's not really how I feel now. It's not newsworthy if you end up not picking up uh, one of the 12 collabs that are being released this week. And I'm not saying this to be like, this isn't a jab towards anyone. I mean, I have made collabs. I have made two different eyeshadow palette collabs and I'm very proud of what I've done. And I, I'm hoping that in the future, I'm able to bring even more fun stuff. But I'm just saying that it's not a big deal anymore to opt out of some eyeshadow palette collabs or like influencer collabs, just because all you can say is, I can't pick them all up. 
and people will understand because there are just so many of them. I think you get where I'm coming from, but I will say that some collabs that I try to stay clear of is collabs that are with brands or influencers that I have never, ever, ever heard of because I... Uh, like I said, there are too many right now and some collabs right now as well are really getting up there in price because of like multi-chromes and dual chromes and like all of that. And I myself don't feel like I want to put like $100, $80, $75 on a collab from an influencer that I haven't heard of with a brand that I haven't tried before. And this is just me. This is like where I draw the line. I've actually been trying this uh, new Tarte lip liner. It's really nice. Uh, I'll put the shade that I have down below. It's honestly a really nice creamy formula that is not too creamy so that too much comes off or that it becomes like super smeary. So I think I like this one. It's nice. Next one is popular makeup step that you never do. Oh boy. Okay, so when I did this one the last time, I said setting spray. But I'm gonna be honest with you and I'm even gonna use some setting spray today because who because i'm actually going to be where this is filmed at 10 o'clock in the morning and i have noticed i think i needed a change of climate to realize how setting sprays actually do help with your makeup i think that setting sprays help with your makeup the most if you have oily skin or if you have dry skin if you have normal skin i don't think that either primers or setting sprays might do that much and um, this is just from like personal experience from like working with my makeup and my skin when it's both in Sweden and completely normal and also here in Austin, Texas when it's normal now but also there is it's really warm outside today like yesterday it was 27 degrees celsius like it's still warm here it's december but it's warm so my skin does tend to get a little oily if it gets too warm there's something about the warmth that just makes my skin go boop i think it's the humidity here as well so i think that both setting sprays and primers i'm starting to see the point of them but i needed a change of climate to like recognize that i will say the step in my makeup routine that i never do never 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 is ooh, ooh, is a contour especially nose contour i will say i've i've seen a lot of i've been to a lot of events i've uh, i've seen people have makeup on in real life and it looks a little funky especially nose contour but then i see like the pictures from the event and their makeup looks the most flawless of everyone i do think that that is due to them doing their makeup to fit a picture more than to fit like if you're an influencer and if, especially if you're an influencer that are relying on looking perfect or having an like an instagram perfected lifestyle maybe it's more important that your followers get to see pictures of you from the event where you look the way that they expect you to look oh there's a hair here i see you i see you then it is that people that see you in real life think that your makeup looks pretty. I, I totally understand that, but I will say I've seen a lot of really wonky nose contours in real life. I don't think that that looks good in real life. And with that being said, if it is a really good nose contour, I mean, I wouldn't see it. I, I, that's the whole point. I'm not going to be able to spot it. So I, I also say this with a little bit of like me realizing that I only can spot the bad ones, just as it is with like filler and Botox and surgery. We can all say like, oh, I hate all fillers, but you only say that because the fillers that you can spot, that's like fillers that are a little overdone. Like the good fillers, you can't spot. The good like Botox, the good stuff like that, you, you, you can't spot that. So it's very easy to say like, oh, I hate all fillers. And it's like, no, I think that like what you hate is just like the fillers that you're able to see. And this is again, just my personal opinion. You're of course uh, okay to disagree. I feel like I have a fiber here. But I would say overall, I don't contour and I never do brow bone highlighter. I think maybe that's the one that's like popular that people do that I don't. I don't like that at all. Uh, I, 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 I don't like that. I don't like it on me, and I will say I don't like it on a lot of other people either. I think it looks 
It's one of those things that I think dates a look and I personally don't prefer it. I'm gonna be using this palette today. This is the Lethal Cosmetics Evergreen palette. I haven't used this one. I did use this palette. This is the one that's called Metamorphosis. This is the warmer palette. I used this one yesterday and I do have a reel on this one and I will link that down below in case you wanna see a look that I did with this palette. But today, we are using the green palette. I'll pop in some swatches so that you can see what it looks like. I know a bunch of you really appreciate when I'm able to put in some swatches before I do a look because, I mean, it helps to be able to see the, the, the thing swatched out. And yes, I know I probably shouldn't do anything like super green and obvious, but I kind of want to, but maybe I shouldn't. I mean, I'm wearing green, I was thinking green, but may I feel like everyone that's doing something with this palette is gonna do green right. So maybe I shouldn't. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna use the purple. <laughs> I'm a rebel. <laughs> I think the next question is the one that's like a little shady and it is a popular beauty influencer you don't subscribe to or watch. This is hot shady tea. <laughs> I think that I have come around a little bit with time and I think that a lot of the people that I used to watch, I no longer watch. And a lot of people that I didn't used to watch, I have come around to watch a little more. Some of them, uh, they come and go in waves. <laughs> like literally they come and go in waves cause like I can only take a small portion of them. But there are a few like bigger influencers that I really enjoy watching like uh, Manny MUA, Laura Lee. Uh, they're, they're just, I don't know, things come and go I think and people grow and people change. And I also think that some people, since 2018, some people has come up and become the new big thing in the beauty sphere, like the Welsh twins and also uh, Bailey Sarian, that have just shifted what people are interested in and what people really, really want to see. There are quite a few, usually the people that I stop watching are people that, whose makeup style is very, very different from mine. And also not only, I don't mind that, but if our makeup style is very different from each other and our situation in life is very different from each other, like if they feature their kids a lot on their channel. I don't have kids, I have no plans on getting kids. I know, shocking, a woman without kids, someone called the police. And also if they're shopping in different places or shopping different brands than, than I shop. If they're only shopping their makeup at TJ Maxx and they feature the kids on their channel and they only do very minimal mascara and lip gloss makeup. I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna lose interest. I am gonna lose interest. Uh, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that because they probably feel the exact same about my channel. <laughs> and that's totally fine, but there are definitely some bigger YouTubers that I used to watch that I don't really watch that much anymore because our lives have just gone in a totally different way. And of course, had their channel been the only channel around that I was able to, look, like if that was the only thing available, I would probably have watched it. Ooh, where is my brush that I like blending out with? Here it is. But now since there are options and since we only have a limited amount of time every day to like devote to stuff we like doing and I like doing YouTube, I'm just gonna choose videos from creators that have either a lifestyle or preferences or makeup styles that more resemble mine. I hope you don't hear the background noise because it is intense. Sounds like there's a battle royale going on outside. <laughs> I put a little primer under my eyes as well because I have noticed as of late that when I just powder my under eyes and then put eyeshadows on top, it just doesn't look as good. So I'm trying out some new techniques. Question number six is popular makeup product slash brand that you don't use support anymore. If you have been here before, you know that I rarely, if ever, cancel brands. I usually say that I give brands, everybody does mistakes. Some make bigger mistakes, some make smaller mistakes, but I always want to come from a place of trying to give people a chance to show that they have grown. Because I don't think that the most important thing in making a mistake is the mistake itself. I think the most important thing is like, so what did you learn? How did you change? And what are you gonna do moving forward? That's why I always, like I say I take a break from a brand. 
I take a break from a brand and I try to see, did they do an apology? Or did they at least acknowledge that something wasn't perfect? I know sometimes brands are stuck, brands and influ influencers are stuck in contracts that makes it impossible to break. Because I can tell you right now, the clauses in those contracts, that is a lot of money if you break it. I can tell you that right now. More money than I have on, in, in my bank account. So I try to see like, did they learn something? Did this happen again? So usually I take a little break. Hopefully a brand will make some kind of a acknowledgement or some kind of an excuse or, or some kind of an apology. And at least I try to see, did this happen again? What, what is happening going forward? Is this an isolated incident? I, I don't know. I just, I want to give people a chance to show that they have grown and I wait a while. And if nothing happens, I tend to just be like, Okay, let me give them another chance. I am way more harsh than a, when a brand or an influencer or a person is doing the same or a way too similar kind of a mistake the second time. Because then I'm like, what did you learn? <laughs> Maybe nothing. I just, I just feel like life is hard. Society is hard and we all make mistakes or do or say stuff that we regret or that we realize when given additional information that like, oh, that wasn't the best choice. I should have known better or now I know better. And I just want to judge people on how they grow instead of the mistakes they, they do. But of course, at the same time, acknowledging when mistakes happen, because I don't want to be the person that's like, oh, that's nothing because it definitely is something. I just try to take breaks from brand and then give them a second chance. Because I feel like that is what I would like. If I made a mistake, I would like for people to give me a chance to grow and be better. I'm going to use this duochrome. It's like a plum. Uh, it's not a plum. It's a purple plum to a green. And I feel like that could work with this purple. I hope. <laughs> we'll see. I think I'm going to spray this just to make sure that I'm getting the effect that I want. The, um, I will say, this is me. I think the Lethal Cosmetics eyeshadows have changed a little bit. I think the mattes are more pigmented and buildable than they used to be. And I think that the shimmers are easier to pick up and more impactful on the eyes, but I need to spray them. So maybe if you like glitter glue, I prefer spraying mine over glitter glue. But when you do that, I think that they are extremely impactful. I actually think that this is going to look really good. And then we can do that lime green in the inner corner. Because I do love the contrast. <laughs> I do love the contrast between these two. And then I will do a look with only these three shadows. Right? I, I think that this could be nice. Next question is makeup trend that you have no interest in trying. Okay, I usually am pretty open-minded when it comes to trends. Because I think the trends are fun. It's a new way of rediscovering our collection. And just using makeup products in a new way. Or trying out a new colorway, trying out a new technique, trying out new placement, just something to keep it fun and fresh. That's how I feel. But I will say something that I never got on board with, and I don't think I ever will, is the blush on the nose trend. I am sorry, I don't like that on me. I think it looks cute on others, and I understand the look that they're going for, but personally, I prefer to not. I would never bash anyone for doing it. Like, who am I to judge anyone else's makeup routine when I'm looking like this? That's not the, that's not my journey. That's not my jive. But I, I just, I don't foresee myself doing any of those um, cold girl, any of the, the blush on the nose, the, the I, e girl thing. I, it's not for me because I don't like how that looks. I think I'm gonna use a little bit of this actually and just see if we can deepen up just the absolute outer corner. Because I think that that would be really cool. And since this is a, I think this will go with both the purple and the duochrome because the duochrome is a little like tealy green. Oh yeah, this is working out perfectly. I'm gonna use a little bit of this super yellowy green. I think that this is the one that they said was like, either similar or the same color as in the one up palette. 
I think I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, let's do a little contrast. I'm gonna do this in the inner corner. The last question is make a product that was better in theory than when you used it, either swatched better or would, let me look, or worked better on others than on you. And yes, I do have a Star Wars phone case. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, let me finish this look up and we can talk about that because I did bring that product out and it was also part of my worst of 2022. Honestly, one of the worst products I've ever tried, I think. What I like to do to make these colors pop is to put the eyeshadow on top of the liner as well. You can see, to really make it the same color, I feel like it really ties everything together. So the product that I wanted to mention that, in theory, like, I thought I was gonna like this one. I thought I was gonna like this one when I saw what this was, when I read the description. This is the Patrick Ta Foundation. This is the Creme Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. I have mine in Light 3, which is a fairly good match. It's maybe a just a little bit too light for me when I have a little bit of a tan, but overall, shade match is nothing wrong. The thing with this is, this is described as a cream foundation with a satin finishing setting powder all in one, and it is meant to give you a natural finish, like a, you know, a skin-like finish. Um, that's the description. This is extremely creamy to the point where it looks like I have just applied my night cream. Like it is that glowy and it does not set down even a little bit. And I don't think I have ever had a foundation that doesn't set down at all. Like it is just floating on top of my skin. If I set it down with powder, it's it does set down a little bit, but it's still not 100% transfer proof. And even with this powder, and I set my entire face with this powder when I've used this foundation, I've used it several times, one time on camera. And even with me just being indoors, in my AC controlled indoors environment, this one went so greasy and so glowy and it totally broke up on me within like five hours. And it just separated to the point where I just looked body, it looked really horrendous. It looked like I had a disease. And like I said, I have pretty normal skin. And especially if I don't go out the door, if I'm just staying inside in this controlled environment, I don't get super greasy skin. And this one just broke up on me and it looked horrible. I have tried using this one with another even more matting fine powder and a gripping primer. And when I do it like that, it stays on a little bit better, but it still becomes glowy to the point where I feel greasy and like, I, I feel like I look disgusting. It's the level of glow that I am never aspiring to have, but I've seen people really enjoy this one. And it just makes me think that we're living in alternate universes because I'm like, how could this one be so bad on me? and that I have to jump through burning hoops of like a special primer and another special powder and like don't go outside in this foundation. I just, it makes me question. But I will say, some of the people that I've heard like this one, they have dry skin. So that might help like the glow actually like go somewhere. It goes like and just hydrates your skin a bit. I just did not like that one at all. And in theory, I thought that it was gonna be good, but I don't think that like how this one wears on my face. I don't think that that really <laughs> matches the description of the product. Another product that was actually like that for me was the Lady Gaga uh, foundation, which I've heard a lot of people really like. I think that that one is too radiant, too glowy, and it, to the point where I feel like I look greasy. Again, I don't have super oily skin. And that one is described as a natural finish as well. I don't think that that is a natural finish. I think it is more of a glowy or radiant finish. So that's a, that's a product where I don't dislike the product. I just think for me, it is described incorrectly because I don't think it's a natural finish, at least not on me. It might be a natural finish on you if you have very dry skin, but yeah, maybe it should be is, does it say that it's for only dry skin? I should actually look at that. If it says that it's fit for dry skin only. But I don't know a lot of makeup brands. You know, all makeup brands are like, this product is perfect if you have dry skin, combo skin, oily skin, aging skin. Like they will, for, for makeup brands, all of their products are perfect for everyone. 
We've all seen it. I've seen it. You've seen it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what you think about it down below. Let's try and keep it respectful. I'm trying to like make this the aura of my channel. The world is harsh. Life is not easy sometimes, but the least we can do for us and for strangers online is just to keep it civil and polite. It's not that deep. I hope you have an amazing day. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos because I will see you again tomorrow for a new one. Bye!